Christy Holtzey, the 2017 Mayesh Design Star, and today I'm here to tell you how to make a holiday arrangement with unexpected details. When I make all arrangements, I start with, I, first I choose the container, then I choose the greenery, and then I choose the colors. Um, so I'll tell you how we made a, a red, a traditional, more classic red holiday arrangement, and then we'll make a white one. Um, for the red, first I chose the container. I chose the Lita by Accent Decor because it's gold and round, it's low, and it's a more classic design. For the flowers, we, we did use some classic flowers like a Freedom Rose. Um, however, we met, mixed in the Matador, which is a garden rose, also a Burgundy Dahlia. We used some Celosia, some Fiddleheads, um, we used a lot of uh, um, different textures and shapes of flowers in order to create depth. Um, if you use tonal flowers, which are monochromatic, like all red or all white, um, then you create a visual depth, and people's eyes go from the lightness to the darkness, and it just makes it look more interesting and artistic. Um, for the red arrangement, we cho I chose the china, the china fir, the cedar, and we also used magnolia, and then I did put in jasmine, just to give it a, um, a vine and also to give it a, a little bit of a modern twist. Some of the non-traditional flowers that I like to use are, this is a mini uh, cymbidium orchid, and it, it's beautiful. Um, I do like to use ranunculus, a red one, um, because they're kind of unexpected at Christmas too. You have to think outside of poinsettias and amaryllis and paper whites and, um, and get into these interesting flowers. They're all red and they're, they're beautiful. So we're going to take a few of these items off of the table so that we have a lot of room and you can see and we will we'll make a, an all white holiday arrangement. So the first thing that I do is I choose my container then I pick my greens, and then I pick my flowers. Um, I start with the mood board or either whatever my customer has come in and asked for. Today, I chose the Chelsea by Accent Decor. They're small, medium, and large. The small, you can put little uh, succulents in. The medium is nice for a centerpiece, and then the large can make a large scale arrangement. Or you can, um, you can also make that into a centerpiece too. I start with my container, the Chelsea. And then I use Oasis Netting to create a ball. And you make it into a pillow or egg or a ball or whatever you want to call it. And just push it right into your container. And then you start putting in your greens. Um, today, I chose the cedar. Um, I think that I will also maybe use some of the huckleberry. I have the silver dollar eucalyptus, the jasmine vine. I do think that we should um, like kiss the season, whatever season that it might be. If it's in the fall, then I think that it is good to use things with a lot of fall leaves. Or if it's at Christmas, I think that it is smart to use some sort of Christmas greenery. Um, spruce is really good. Uh, and another great thing about Christmas greens is that um, they stay in your cooler for a very, very long time. I chose the eucalyptus um, for its color, also its shape. It's got a little nice round broad uh, leaf, which I think is a, a nice contrast to the huckleberry leaf. The Port Ortford cedar is really pretty, and it also has a nice, it has a distinct smell that I think reminds me of the holidays, and it's always nice to have that on your centerpiece at your table. And when I think about choosing my greenery, um, I, I, I just, I, I think that greenery or foliage is not just leaves, it's also fruiting items or berries or branches. Holly berries are really great during the Christmas season, but so are heavenly bamboo berries. 
So now that my greenery is in, I'll go ahead and start adding some flowers. Some of the flowers, the unexpected white flowers that I chose to use for my holiday arrangement are these anemones, the ranunculus, the bunny tail, and these spray roses, and her name is Wendy, W-E-N-D-Y, and she's really pretty. The, the white roses that I'm using today, are they're called Mondile. I'm going to put them in really low. If you're just getting started with centerpieces um, or floristry, I want rule that you can always use is you don't want to go over from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger. You don't want the flower arrangement to go too far over that. You can use that as a guide so that people can see each other. Next I'm adding in some white ranunculus. I think it's a good to, when you are picking out your flower recipe, for you to go ahead and choose your focal flowers first. I'm not locked in, but I would say roses are really good focal flowers, ranunculus are great focal flowers, or whatever you find in the cooler, or what your rep finds in the cooler that just strikes your fancy. I'm not locked into these always have to be the focal flower. These always do open up pretty, but there's always, be, be open to suggestions and inspirations. Occasionally we do have ranunculus that come in and, and we really want to make sure that they stay sturdy. Um, but you, you can take a, an Oasis wire. They have different gauges. You just run it right up through the bottom. See how there's a hole? right there and you just run it right in until you reach the top where you know you feel like it's going to be sturdy let's add the Wendy's next I think today we and often we go from least delicate to most delicate when I'm arranging. Although spray roses are traditional flowers, um, I think the garden spray roses and the newer varieties like the Windy, they're not what people are used to. For the berries, we chose viburnum berries. They're not white, but I feel like that they are blue and still neutral. Because I really want it to focus more on the white, I'm, I'm going to cut these stems a little shorter. I don't want them to hover over. I'd rather them be around the bottom. And this is a special kind of viburnum that I've never seen before. And one of the great things about the Mayesh pull is that I, would, I have no idea what these are. I would have never known that they were in the cooler or an option. But um, Kelly, she just sent them, and, and I, I, I love them. And they smell really good. They came on long stems, and we were able to cut them up into, into smaller pieces, so it really went a long way. The same is true for the cedar. When you order the cedar from Ayesh, um, it comes in, and the, the leaves are about 10 to 15 inches long, and you can cut it up into a lot. You can take one long piece and cut it into about three, enough for this little arrangement. I think we'll stick in this Silby. I do kind of put my flowers, I do them in threes, but I make little families so that um, it seems like they're clustered together. When you're trying to think outside of the box, it seems like all the Christmas center, centerpieces look the same, or all of the wreaths at Christmas, they all look the same. So I think that you can look in your backyard for inspiration. Um, these are anemones, and they are beautiful right now, this time of year. And they are something that I think is a little bit unexpected. I, I think that whenever you include these things that are unexpected and seasonal, whether you went and gathered it or your, your rep tells you, oh, we're the, there's a beautiful pack of bunny tail here and it, it's totally in season. It gives your arrangement a sense of, of time and a sense of place and it makes it really seem 
more natural than even a Christmas arrangement that just looks like a Christmas arrangement out of a storybook. So here you have your one-tone holiday classic but unexpected design. So I want to thank you for watching the episodes, my team for um, being here and, and helping me take out the trash, the whole crew, everyone, especially the people watching out there and Mayesh. Um, thanks for being on this journey with me and it's been awesome being a 2017 Mayesh Design Star. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful.